So you've been editing away in DaVinci Resolve and everything's going smooth until you realize that you haven't set your timeline frame rate correctly in your project settings. So let me show you. If we click on here and go to timeline frame rate, we are set to 24 and it's locked. I can't change that. And I want this project to be 25 frames per second. So how are we gonna fix that? So in this episode, I'm gonna show you how to fix it. I'm gonna show you how to set it up correctly to start with. And I'm also gonna show you that DaVinci Resolve version 18 behaves slightly different when it's defaulting the timeline frame rate than version 17 and previous. So this is a beginner's episode. So if you are a more advanced user, you might wanna check out some of my more in-depth episodes on editing and color grading. But for those of you who wanna know about the timeline frame rate, let's go and take a look. So we've got an edit going on here and let's just have a look at what we've got in the media page. We've got some B-roll here. This B-roll is running at 50 frames per second because the idea is I want to slow it down to 25 and it will look nice and smooth. This is all footage that I shot uh, for my vlog that I did earlier in the year. My main pieces to camera are 25 frames per second. So this dictates to me what the actual timeline frame rate should be because my dialogue is the main body of the, of the program. So this is all shot at 25 frames per second and annoyingly, my project is now locked at 24 frames per second. So the timeline frame rate will determine how my program gets rendered at the end. So it's gonna be rendered at 24. I've also got in here some stock footage. I wanna use a little bit of footage of Vegas. This has come from ArtGrid, and often that footage doesn't match your primary frames per second. This is 23.976. However, I'm only gonna use small bits of it. I don't really mind if that's incorrect, but I do want my program to be 25 frames per second. Right, so how can we fix that? Well, before we fix it, I'm gonna create a brand new project and I'm gonna show you how DaVinci Resolve behaves and why we got locked at 24 frames per second to start with. So let's do a brand new project. I'm gonna click on here. I'm gonna right hand click and say new project. And we're gonna call this 25 FPS, correct. And we've now got a brand new blank project. And just to show you in here, if I click on this little icon, our timeline frame rate is 24. And this is now editable. It's still editable because we haven't made a timeline yet. This is the key thing. So I could now set that to be 25 and that would be great. My project was locked at 25 and everything's good. Let's just leave it at 24 because I want to show you the mistake that a lot of people make and why this gets wrong in the first place. So let's press save. So it's still 24, it's still editable. So this is the default behavior. And I'm gonna start importing my footage. Now, I wanna bring in my B-roll, which is 50 frames per second. And it, this is a nice little tip. You can literally just grab a whole folder and drop it into the media pool, which means Resolve can see it. So up here, this is just looking at my hard drives. Resolve can't see the footage until it's down here. And it's recognized that this footage is 50 frames per second. So what it's saying is, would you like to change your timeline frame rate to match? Well, I don't. I don't want it to be 50 frames per second. I want it to be 25 frames per second. So I'm gonna say don't change. So let's drag and drop this one in as well. And of course, my stock footage down here. I'm just literally dragging those folders in. And there we go. So what I'm gonna do now is make our first edit. So I'm gonna go into the edit page. And the first thing I wanna do is get a bit of dialogue from here. Okay, so there's my first clip, and I'm gonna drag and drop that down onto my timeline. And I could have done that using F9 or F10 as well. But now that we've got a sequence, this timeline here, okay, if we go to our project settings, we are now locked. This is the point at which it locks your timeline. Now in version 17, it locks when you first bring in footage. So at least you have a chance to get all your footage in and you can still decide what your timeline frame rate is gonna be. But now that I've created a timeline, the default project setting was set to 24. Right, so what I can do is undo that. I can click on here and I can now set it correctly to be 25. And I strongly advise that you do this as the very first thing when you create a brand new project. So let's say save. I'm gonna change the project frame rate and let's just add that clip in again. There it is on my timeline and it's 25. Go to the project settings and there we go. We're now at 25 and it's locked at 25. So this is great. I can carry on working like this now. And what I actually want to check is when I go to deliver, the frame rate, is locked now at 25. The frame rate matches the timeline frame rate, okay? So had I set that to 24, I can't even override it on output. 
Right, so let's go back to the original project and have a look how we can fix that edit that we've already created. You might have been working for five, six, seven hours on that edit. You don't want to have to start again. So I'm gonna show you a quick way of getting around that. So let's go back to that project. I'm gonna to go to my edit page. Here's our faulty edit. It's locked at 24. So what can we do? Well, we obviously do need to create a brand new sequence, but we can't change the project. But what we can do is have our sequences have an independent frame rate to the project. So I'm gonna to go to this little folder I created called Sequences. Here's our current timeline. If I open up the metadata folder up here, you'll see that's 24 frames per second on that timeline. I'm gonna right hand click here. I'm gonna say Timeline, Create New Timeline. Now, down here it says Use Project Settings. If I use the project settings, this is gonna be 24 frames per second again. So let's undo that. Now we get these headings at the top and this allows me to change all sorts of things. And in format, I can change the timeline frame rate. So let's make that to be 25. I'm gonna say create. And I've now got a blank 25 frames per second timeline. So I could just start re-editing now. If I go up here and just start editing, and let's bring that clip down again, that is now sitting in a 25 frames per second timeline, which we can see clearly here in the metadata. And if I go to deliver, it's now at 25, but the project setting is still set to 24. So this is a good way out of it, but that means re-editing. So what I'm gonna do is go to my edit page. Let's get rid of that. I'm still on timeline two. And what I'm gonna do is take that timeline one and I'm gonna literally drag and drop it in to timeline two. So the timeline one is now playing in timeline two and I can't see the clips in there, but what I could do is right hand click and say decompose in place using clips. And there is all the edits that I had in timeline one, now sat in timeline two, you can see the little tick there. That is running at 25 frames per second and that's all gonna work really well. The other way I could have done that, if I just get rid of that, is I could go to my timeline one, I can highlight all the clips and say command C to copy, go to timeline two, and I can literally copy and paste. Now with this, you have to make sure you've got the right number of video and audio tracks or else it won't copy in to start with. So I prefer to do it the other way where you just literally drag it in. So this is now saved all the edit that I've done. I appreciate there's only a few edits here, but imagine that was a much longer timeline. So hopefully that has helped you to understand what the timeline frame rate is. Now there's one other thing in here that I just wanna show people. And the playback frame rate is still editable. That's because the playback frame rate is independent of the timeline frame rate. The timeline frame rate is what will be rendered out at the end, but the playback frame rate is allowing me, so a good example of this is when I'm doing grading and I grade a long form edit, so you might have five, six, 700 edits in there, and you just wanna watch the grade back, but at maybe twice speed. So if my project is set to 25 frames per second, and I set my playback frame rate to be 50, I can literally just press play either on my panel or on my keyboard and the timeline by default will play at twice speed. And this allows me to view the program at twice speed. So it's basically allowing me to just visually check it without having to watch the whole hour. So playback frame rate is completely independent of timeline frame rate. So I hope that's helped you understand why this timeline frame rate grays out. It's basically as soon as you have a timeline on there, it's gonna lock how to overcome it and hopefully how to set it up correctly to start with. I have other beginners episodes. There's a playlist on my channel. So if you are a beginner, check out some of those. Uh, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. And uh, if you wanna go into more in-depth stuff, there's plenty of in-depth stuff on my channel too. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode. Hi, Lulu. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to record. You wanna to go to Cyprus? Okay, how, how much is it? Okay, listen, I'm just, I just want to get this episode out. Can we talk about this later? All right, love you. Bye, bye.